Beauty calls and gives no warning. Shadows rise and wander on the day. In the twilight, in the quiet. Inside, the book is built with two intertwining sequences. The first sequence is in the voice of my own very weird version of Jesus. Um, something about writing through this persona freed me up to say some stuff that I didn't know I wanted to say. Uh, according to me, Jesus is a gardener, a Sufi Muslim, an esoteric Buddhist, an atheist, a sufferer of ocular migraines, and a fan of Federico Garcia Lorca. So, uh, a reading organizer recently accused me of attempting a wholesale restructuring of Christianity. Maybe that's not quite wrong. Um, the other sequence is, in fact, about Maria Callas. 1923 to 1977, who has fascinated me for over 50 years. For my 10th birthday in 1966, I asked my parents for a specific recording of Verdi's Rigoletto with Maria Callas, tenor Giuseppe Di Stefano, baritone Tito Gobi, and conducted by Tullio Serafin. For fans of mid-century opera, this was the dream team. And I guess I must have learned about it from studying the liner notes of my mother's other opera recordings. This request frightened my father very much <laughs> that I might be gay, about which he was correct. You'll be glad to know that he and I reconciled around that fact, although it took some years. The funny thing is that they gave me the recording. Uh, you're going to hear in these Kalas poems that I deliberately confuse her with my own troubled mother, who first took me to the opera when I was six years old. Um, the, the way we get from Jesus to Kalas is that Jesus himself mentions Kalas, as one does, and then the Kalas sequence spins off from, from the Jesus sequence. So I'll start with Jesus and then move on to Kalas when he does. A postcard of Christ carrying the cross, circle of Giovanni Bellini, circa 1805, sorry, sorry 1505, oil on wood, is what he fits between his third and fourth weekly pill boxes to remind himself to reorder. His routine about the antivirals is of greater magnitude, maybe, than the one in which Mrs. Gardner used to place a vase of violets in front of the painting when she owned it. This card's only a reproduction of the passion not the original, but we've seen how imitation and daily use can make of pity and fear an almost cozy utensil. The Savior's torso is pointed toward the royal climb, but his unreadable eye turns out, loosing on you, passerby, a tear of blood and milk. Jesus said to me, did you mean to draw some moral from your own life, how you found love so late, how, though you weren't patient, weren't kind, in pursuit were ruthless, it was given to you anyway? Though that story's not done, not proven. You have some wisdom to share with the loveless now, do you? Something they should or shouldn't do. The gay boy, the raped girl, the libeled widow. 
Jesus now resting his abraded hand on the book. Go ahead, then. Speak. Promise them something. Jesus said, a program remembers, doesn't it, where you stopped watching the movie, where you clicked off those books before shutting off the light. Other programs remember your searches, your queue, passwords, complaints, the wallpaper you chose, how loud, how bright you preferred things to be, your presence in the streaming firmament. What I want to know is, after you've climbed up the seven-story bardos, louder and brighter than you prefer, I've heard, how long do you think they'll remember your place? Hold it open for you. Keep it warm. Written on the mirror in steam, Jesus's note read, Try to remember who I was before you heard my name. Jesus said, You will not be able to catch the swan boat of your youth by running after it like that. I know it was pretty. I know it didn't linger. I know the pier caught fire and sank. Wait, he said tarry a while alongside the wreck. I don't say this to everyone, but there will come another swan. <laughs> Jesus said, Buddhas of limitless light, a phrase encountered by accident, let's say, on an old scroll or overheard. Afterward, would it be impossible to feel so doubting and blue about people, never again so stagey, so show-me, so heart-hurt? Even if there are no Buddhas of limitless light? Standing and moving. My God, through the night's susceptible hours, I search with my tongue for some formula for remembering you, one that doesn't insist on your oneness, which I doubt. There is no God but God tastes funny to me, bad funny, because though, okay, as Rukeyser said about islands, Oh, for God's sake, they are connected underneath. <laughs> Above the surface, you are many gods, a hard rain of gods, in fact. You are the dry river, the black brook, lost lake, small hidden falls, and the sweet water of Maryland's pretty boy reservoir. You are the subfusk hour of the rat and Myoken, the pole star. You are a current forcing yourself north, wind resisting your progress, tides rushing up and down the channel, confused and dangerous. You are table mountains, arches and domes, standing stones in an oval, long Meg and her daughters. And how can you not be the terrible ancient cedars at Okonowin, the mossy graves and hollow underplaces of Dis, Tartarus, and Yomi, realms of white moths and trippy organ pipes, as well as foxes, words, ghosts, honey, oils, and noises? In the past, you've hid in the mystery of swords, mirrors and comma-shaped jewels. More recently, the god Hermes showed himself to my friend Diane as Freddie Mercury, about age 39. <laughs> and I know a guy who leaves a five yen coin on the windowsill as an offering to whatever the view is that day. To me, you've appeared as certain verbs, such as beheld in English or 
Blanchir in French, in the music, the drumming, if not the argument of la ilaha illallah, and in some gestures, such as the Half Moon Night in 1987, when a pale god named Bruno leaned over to kiss, oh, thirsty me, young and transfigured on the dance floor at the Parliament House in Orlando, the memory of which is bodies of water, both standing and moving. Jesus said, God without concepts. I said, but what about metaphor? Simile, analogy, coyotes yipping at the moon in the water. Jesus said, God without concepts. I said, doctors without borders. <laughs> Dismissal without prejudice. Bath time without tears. Jesus said, the Rothko Chapel said, song without words. I said, oh, please, you just broke your own rule. And I said, instead of Rothko's empty black and purple voids, how about Fiat Sein Heiligen in Bavaria? Those creamy ovals, S-curves, Rococo, stucco, volutes, shells, floating bows, witty, teasing, elusive architecture, even Robert Venturi, like, look it up. <laughs> Jesus said, God without, but it was late and I had already hung anyway up on him. <laughs> Jesus said, don't try to draw me into an argument about whether fairies can be saved. There are, in fact, dumb questions. A student asked Sri Mahayogi, when will Maitreya come? Mahayogi asked for pencil and paper, wrote a one, then covered the rest of the page with zeros. He studied the zeros, erased a few, asked for the very large number to be passed back to the student. Long time, he said. Long, lonely time. Don't wait. I dreamed that Jesus bid me go and rake the ashes on Mount Golgotha, looking for the poems he lost there. My dear, don't weep, he said. One of them began, a bead like amber hung from pine, so you may, he said, find my virtue glinting in the dust. The rosin of my heart, he said, my dear, my litter of lost rosin. Jesus said, just when I think I've heard everything Kalas recorded, I stumble on something new. This Sanson thing, I almost didn't click on because it was, you know, Sanson, who stormed out of the Rite of Spring, 29 May, 1913, infuriated over the misuse of the bassoon. <laughs> Anyhow, <clears throat> 61, Paris, Callas with her musical friend, Georges Pret. Too bad they couldn't have married as well. They were good together. It was three years after her voice was supposedly gone, she gave to one listener an experience he described on YouTube. Working with my dad in the chip shop radio on in the background, this was played. I couldn't recognize the singer, but remember saying, Dad, she has to be one of the greatest in the world. Her voice confused me. But how often do we get a chance to listen as if for the first time? His first time, so close to her last time, you, Writing this, Jesus said, tried to be a singer when you were young. You weren't good enough. But Kalas opened a neural pathway through which the representations run, 
masks of light and shade. Maybe her voice had almost to be gone before it could prove with inevitable little slidings from one note to its neighbor or wider, Delilah to Samson, that her confidence was shut, but not her throat, still changing every note's color, all that has dark sounds, roots thrusting into the fertile loam known to all of us, ignored by all of us, a power and not a behavior, a struggle and not a concept, not even in the throat, but surging up from the soles of the feet, her feet before which lay paradise. Maria Callas went to Hamburg. In 1959, when Maria Callas went to Hamburg, her hair was still neoclassical. In the film, she emerges at zero minutes, seven seconds, silk legs, the clapper of an underwater bell. But the moment I need to tell about is at 42.30. <laughs> prelude of the Pirata aria, when resting her left hand on the conductor's cage, head down, eyes closed, cloisters, 30 seconds, 40, 50. She doesn't know us. We are nowhere and no one. Descending figure, strings distressed, dissonant, trembling, swelling. Remember mom in the 60s? Her door closed, sometimes till noon. One of the things that really interested me in writing about Kalas was she, as an artist and a person, made uh, mistakes. <laughs> she, she had public failures, um, both on stage and and off stage, and I think partly that was because, like an athlete, she was taking enormous risks. She was pressing at the limits of what the human voice could do. So occasionally, she went off the rails uh, and wasn't able to realize her intentions. But what fascinated me was, how do you go on after having a big public train wreck, <laughs> assuming you don't just run off the stage and are never heard of again, which is not what she did. And for that matter, how do any of us go on after having a failure? Crack up at 1436. <clears throat> the trouble starts at woe to him, Lady Macbeth, letter scene who sets uncertain foot and then retreats. On retreat, her mouth starts square, G, A, B, high C, then spreads, the C thins, curdles, acidic. But to me, it's less important that she cracks the high C. Yes, she does, she did, 1959, moment 1436 than what her face did, her hands. Eyes widen, narrow, widen wider while she tries to save the note. After it splinters, all gone, went wrong so fast, her right hand apologizes, out from the breast, back, saying, well, I tried, I practiced for 22 years, for instance, so for a moment, Ten measures, horn, trumpet, trombone, strings. How about we shut our eyes and smile to ourselves? Then, side eye to the conductor, not your fault, moving on. Come on, hurry, I want to burn that cold heart of yours. <clears throat> I'm glad I don't have to sing a high C right now. <laughs> Long muteness at 46.12. Then, after hiding, 
Kalas opened her eyes and raised in profile her pointy chin, one of her mad scenes. But where's her voice? I'm just a baby in a mud house in a mountain town, so I can't help much. Maybe Mom will take me to the opera, pull on her black Dior with the plunging back, ask me to sponge Max Factor over her scars, those little white moons. At 4406, her face had one hope. At 4416, it flowed out through her eyes. But where's her voice? Her perfume was my sin, her 50s console full of opera from Dick Aspinwall, sometime afternoon guy who asked, did I want a knuckle sandwich? I know now that when I'm nine, I'll sing soprano, act one altar boy in Tosca, trouble in butterfly, Marie's kid at the end of Wozzeck on his stick horse, hop, 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 and I'll shake Stravinsky's hand. I can't help this either, but Dad might have worried less about queers in the theater and more about the afternoons he was away. At 4612, I'm still three, so I won't hear it for another 55 years when finally, is it day or night? Am I alive or buried? She opens her mouth. Kalas versus Jesus. You knew it would come to this, right? Jesus includes Kalas, but Kalas has no Jesus in her. It being very Greek of her to ignore him in favor of his mother and to count upon her understanding of why a woman would feel the need to say over the radio, I would not kill my enemies, but I will make them get down on their knees. I will, I can, I must. Kalas as Medea. Never type in the comment section that she had the voice of an angel. Please, fool, what angel ever cried wronged, wronged, wronged from all six tits while warming her feet at a fire made with the other soprano's pretty hair? <laughs> One feather of the firebird, it said, could light a darkened room. If you must type something, type a voice of white phosphorus, of ichor, of the Centralia mine fire still burning after 54 years, of a cloak made with flayed angel skins with their caroling tongues still attached. Because what you see when with her nightshade Kalas x-rays the dark room where you thought you were alone, is the feathered gods at work, bringing death to the living and raising the dead to life. Envoy, Kalas and my mother say goodbye. One, after whoever filched her urn from its niche in the columbarium, <clears throat> then sleepy, bored, Set it down, I'm making up this part now, on Christmas Day on the path of the dragon. It was Vaso decided on the Aegean. The sea being the one place where when you put something, you always know where it is. A windy day, her ashes blew back in their faces, their mouths. Two following me, watching, listening, writing this. You can't save me. Out the window, I'll sleepwalk again over the rickety mill race. I'll wake up. It's in my music, again on the divan of some man, not your father. And again, I'll cross the Alps on just my exhaled breath. Bruna's hand. You went to her niche, 
in 87, stole a white rose Bruna, her maid, had left. Bruna's hand left a rose, and your hand carried it away. The Primal Uses of Kalas After about a million births, the soul recognizes the scent of placenta carried from a darkened room in a bowl, destined for a variety of ancient uses. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Allahu Akbar, a moment of no one injuring anyone anywhere. It was after his bath <clears throat> and the evening was cool and crickets. He hummed the tune to lilac wine. I feel unready for my love. Then whispered, God is extreme. But didn't mean me, I think, or anyone to overhear. I told Jesus, when I was afraid as a child, I looked for pictures of you in the encyclopedia and circled them around my bed. Jesus said, I remember. Giotto, Cimabue, Fra Angelico. I remember the bells as Duccio's Maesta was carried into the cathedral. I told Jesus, I asked you to lift my gayness from me, laid down on my face in front of the altar at All Saints Church on West Fort Street in Detroit. I was 19. It was 1975, midnight, and the tiles were cold. Jesus said, I remember asking you, hath the rain a father or who hath begotten the drops of dew? I told Jesus, for 30 years I asked you to send me someone to love, and then Stephen came and we married, but we were old, so I begged you, keep us alive, let us live a little longer. Jesus said, I remember, I remember, I remember the poem of you, that I sent to the Empress with a branch of flowering. Thank you very much.